Okay. Um, it's already 10 o'clock. So I think uh, more will be joining us later. So without further ado, I think we'll start our session. Assalamualaikum and uh, a very good morning. Um, first and foremost, we would like to thank everyone for joining us today live from UITM Malaysia and to the comfort of your home home, own home or wherever place you may be on behalf of the Faculty of Architecture, Planning and Surveying and as moderator for this session for this uh, FSPU talk webinar, PhD sharing session 2020, welcome. So for our webinar today, um, speakers will share their presentation in about 30 minutes. We will then proceed with the presentation of both speakers uh, before ending it with a question and answer session. So if there are any questions um, from the floor, please write it in and I will read it uh, during the Q&A session. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone to kindly switch off your microphones um, and uh, during the presentation, your cooperation um, is greatly appreciated. I hope the first speaker is ready. Um, the first speaker, uh, we would like to invite Dr. Hamiza Yaakob. She is a lecturer at uh, Center of Studies for Town and Regional Planning. She obtained her Bachelor of Science in Urban and Regional Planning in 2009 from International Islamic University of Malaysia. Her Master's of Science in Housing Planning in 2011 from University Technology Mara, uh, no, sorry, University Technology Malaysia Skudai UTM, and PhD specializing in built environment in 2018 from University Technology Mara. So her PhD research, uh, which was funded by TPM scholarship, is focused on the effectiveness of land use planning in urban housing development in Selangor. Thus, for, for thus the topic for today is as um, similar to he, her PhD, which is uh, the effectiveness of land use planning in urban housing developments in Selangor. So with that, um, I call upon Dr. Hamiza to present her presentation. Thank you. Uh. Thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, Mr. Tun Muhammad Irfan, uh, for a brief introduction on myself. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam jumaat to uh, every one of you. Okay, uh, wait a minute. Um, Um, thank you to um, RMU FSPU um, teams, uh, which leads by Dr. Nur Akmal for organizing this um, sh uh, sharing sessions. Um, and also, uh, it's a great opportunity for uh, me actually to share uh, a little bit, uh, at least uh, to, to the audience. And thank you for the audience uh, to join the sessions. Um, and hopefully uh, those who are still uh, pursuing PhD, um, just keep that uh, uh, good momentum until you finish the journey, inshallah. So uh, without further ado, um, as mentioned by uh, moderator, this is actually um, my uh, final uh, titles of uh, thesis, uh, which is uh, the effectiveness of land use planning in urban housing development in Selangor. So basically, this is the, I think, um, sorry, fifth, sorry, eh? wait. Lupa pula nak ni, nak buka. Okay, sorry. Okay, basically, uh, this is the, the final uh, title thesis okay uh, and I think it's normal for all of us um, uh, to change and amend uh, the, the the final thesis yeah so um, 
this is the contents uh, for the today presentation. I will give um, a very short brief on the research structure, structure and also uh, some problem statement derived from literature review and also uh, formulation of uh, research aims and uh, the objective which derive from um, research uh, questions. Uh, theoretical framework uh, based on uh, uh, some uh, literature review. Uh, in this uh, research, actually, uh, I do two parts of literature review. And um, uh, we'll discuss further on research methodology. In this research, uh, the research choose mixed uh, methods approach and also discuss on the findings analysis uh, recommendation. And last, uh, on the area for future research. Okay, this is uh, the research structure. So basically, there are nine chapters uh, in this uh, uh, thesis. Uh, chapter one is more focusing on the identifying issue and um, formulation of a research uh, objective and also some brief introduction on research method. And for chapter two and three is more on the literature review, uh, which focus more on the theory, uh, on the planning and control system, which related to housing. And also uh, the third chapter is more on the planning mechanism and development control, okay, which discuss more on the development plan. And also some, uh, some procedure uh, uh, based on uh, issue and also planning, uh, uh, housing planning practice in a developed country and developing country. And uh, for the fourth uh, chapter, is more discussed on the um, study area, which, uh, which is Lango. Uh, and chapter four, uh, chapter five is more on data collection, uh, which I mentioned before, is more on the mixed method approach, uh, uh, questionnaire survey, and also expert interviews. And uh, for chapter six and seven, is more on data analysis from um, questionnaire survey and uh, chapter 7 is more on the um, findings of the expert view interviews. Okay, and chapter 8 is more on discussion and ends with chapter 9, uh, which is uh, more on the recommendation and area for future research. Okay, um, uh, based from uh, literature review, there are uh, three problem statements uh, from uh, this uh, uh, research. Uh, the first uh, has been related to the uh, policy, ineffectiveness of policy that be implemented. Uh, basically, uh, the, the problems has been highlighted is more on the uh, field to consider this housing market demands, uh, especially during formulations of uh, the policy. And also, uh, uh, in terms of the rules of policy in uh, actually uh, housing planning, in housing planning is still arguable. And then for the problem uh, statement number two is more on the um, highlighted more on the weakness in preparations of development strategy, which employ during preparations of local plan. Basically, uh, there are three um, uh, focus uh, issue uh, in these problems, uh, basically uh, related to uh, location, locational uh, of the future housing. Uh, uh, in terms of inaccuracy of land area distributed, which leads to uh, some cases like oversupply, and also in terms of uh, implementations of guidelines during layout approval, which affect in terms of uh, levels of compliance as well. So basically, one of the um, uh, problems that have been highlighted is uh, based on the literature review is actually more on the uh, provisions of these uh, planning requirements, such as um, um, facilities, uh, provisions of facilities, open space, uh, utilities, and etc. So for problem statement number three is more on the uh, process, uh, uh, the weaknesses uh, of implementation of the process uh, of planning control during uh, application and approval. So basically, um, uh, it is more involved uh, during Kemerdana um, Merancang uh, of the housing, lah, housing planning. So basically, uh, the aspect that been highlighted in the problem statement is uh, focusing on the uh, non-compliant practice, uh, insufficient process in monitoring approvals, and also uh, factors of difficulty uh, that could influence in terms of uh, effectiveness of housing control. 
Okay, uh, this is actually the summarizations of problem statement, uh, which is also research gap based on the uh, literature review, which highlighted uh, on the all these um, problem statements. Uh, okay, I'm not going to discuss further on this one. So based on that problem statement, basically um, uh, the aims of the research is actually to examine the effectiveness of development plan and also planning control in terms of uh, its implementation. So um, to achieve this objective, actually there are four uh, research objectives, which uh, the first objective focusing more on the uh, implementation of the policy, which related to housing planning. And uh, the second objective uh, is more on to evaluate the effectiveness of uh, this housing development strategy, which involves three aspects, which is land location, uh, land size, and also planning guideline. And uh, for research objective number three is more on the uh, identifying effectiveness related to the current process of planning control especially during uh, planning application and also approvals. So uh, for research objective four, it's more on analyzing what are the planning aspects that actually influence uh, housing developments that require a high attention for improvements uh, in terms of its effectiveness of its implementation. <coughs> Okay, so uh, move to research limitation. Basically, uh, there are four uh, in terms of criteria to measure effectiveness because uh, when we talk about effectiveness, uh, there are um, some indicators that we need to um, 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 explore uh, so that uh, to measure the effectiveness. Okay, so um, but uh, after some readings, um, there are actually six criteria uh, to measure this effectiveness. So I will further discuss after this. Uh, the second limitation is in terms of collecting and anal analyzing qualitative data from in-depth interviews. And number third is only confine the area under city and municipal council, okay, because uh, it's involved more on the urban area. Okay, so basically uh, those working respondent are drawn from this uh, city and municipal council in Selangor. Okay, the fourth one is more on the questionnaire survey. Uh, because the method use a single cross-sectional method. So basically, um, uh, for those uh, who respond within the time frame were only selected as a sample to, to actually save time. Okay. All right, move to theoretical framework. Basically, this is the, the summarizations of um, uh, what we've, uh, what have uh, the research found from literature review. So basically, uh, the problem is... Uh, um, highlighted was weaknesses and ineffectiveness. So uh, the focus more on the preparations and also implementations uh, as a planning activity in housing. So uh, this um, these elements uh, in the grey box colored uh, is actually the dimensions or indicator to actually uh, measure the levels of e effectiveness, okay, in terms of planning for policy in structure plan, and then uh, in terms of uh, these three aspects uh, during implementations and preparations of a local plan, and also uh, these two uh, factors uh, during the uh, assessing, controlling, uh, monitoring, and approving of uh, housing applications, okay. So the study area is actually um, focusing on a uh, city and municipal council. So basically, um, um, respondents were drawn from um, this uh, eight uh, city and municipal council. During that time, uh, Majlis uh, Perbandaran Kuala Langat is excluded because um, uh, at that uh, time, uh, Majlis Perbandaran Kuala Langat is still Majlis Daerah and um, there are actually eight lah, uh, here and also um, all this uh, municipal and city council is under these five districts which clan district, Petaling, Gombak, Kuala Langat and also Sepang. So this is some uh, brief um, um, on the study area. So basically, uh, there are a lot of figure in terms of housing stock and um, uh, the prices and land area. But um, 
to make it short, I just uh, show the uh, only the brief uh, introductions on uh, land use composition for bit up land. So basically, in this figure, you can see that uh, residential is the uh, among the highest uh, bit up uh, among eight categories uh, in uh, this uh, bit up land in Selangor, uh, 2012. Uh, 2012. Okay, basically district uh, Hulu Langat and Klang uh, is the highest residential land use in terms of hectares. Okay, move to research methodology. So um, to achieve this uh, research objective one, two and three, uh, the research has been used explanatory sequential mixed methods, which is uh, quantitative and qualitative, where uh, quantitative will be collected uh, uh, were collected uh, using this structured questionnaire survey, okay, and were analyzed in terms of descriptive analysis, uh, frequency distributions, and also mean score. Okay, for qualitative purpose approach, uh, the data were collected uh, via a structured interview, uh, which uh, analyzed using Atlas DI based on the content analysis of the uh, full transcript of the uh, interviews finding. And then for achieving re uh, research objective four, uh, based on the result of finding from questionnaire survey, so the analysis were done um, uh, by SPSS as well, but uh, in terms of uh, importance performer analysis uh, index, which is IPA or also known as quadrant analysis. Okay, this is sampling design, uh, which I mentioned before. Uh, there are two approach, quantitative approach and qualitative approach. Basically, uh, to, to start with a uh, questionnaire survey, uh, the actual questionnaire survey. So, the research have start a uh, pilot survey, uh, but basically, uh, it's only involve um, three uh, council, uh, which is uh, under the Petaling district. Uh, MPSJ, MBSA, and also um, MPPJ. So basically, um, uh, this is a pilot survey was done to actually to test reliability before the actual survey was started. And then um, here, um, actual survey um, were involved uh, two category or planner. Uh, government planner and also private planner, which a uh, government planner were from a federal town country uh, known as now known as Plan Malaysia. Um, and uh, the respondent were actually selected from two departments, uh, which is uh, Kawal Selia, uh, those uh, which is uh, heads of the units, and also uh, Bahagian uh, Rancangan Pembangunan. Okay, so uh, same goes to Selangor Plan Malaysia uh, um, uh, uh, because uh, this is more on the to get uh, the insight um, um, uh, explanations. So uh, the thought, uh, the respondents are choose with grade J forty one to J forty eight uh, from two department as well, uh, which involve uh, those uh, in OSC and also OAC in uh, Selangor uh, Plan Malaysia and also uh, those from um, Rancangan Pembangunan. Okay, and also those involved in uh, local planning authority as well in uh, this eight uh, city and municipal council. Okay, so private planners uh, which involve senior planners uh, uh, which uh, the sample sampling frame, frame is actually from MIP registered uh, list uh, 2000. 12, 2013. Okay, so basically, um, uh, in total, uh, the sampling frame, uh, the sampling uh, size is actually 113. But uh, because of uh, using the single cross-sectional method uh, due to time constraint, so uh, those 67 uh, respond, uh, respondent uh, were only collected just one uh, within these time frames. So basically, uh, the response rate is acceptable, okay, uh, uh, based on justification that uh, actually uh, this study is emphasis more on the uh, what we call um, um, process, okay, to understand the process. So uh, which not require any high levels of um, uh, quantitative. Um, 
ataupun uh, what we call questionnaire statistical analysis high levels okay so basically for quality approach um, there are um, uh, 15 respondents so basically uh, those in uh, uh, positions uh, uh, as, as mentioned in the slide okay okay uh, uh, this is the analysis and findings so basically um, for planning policy which relate to uh, research objective one so basically this is all the finding from questionnaire survey uh, and also structured interview uh, where uh, for planning policy uh, the lowest mean score is actually uh, in terms of uh, housing ownerships and also followed by housing price okay this is the uh, policy that been highlighted in terms of uh, its effectiveness and um, Okay, same goes to this one in terms of uh, objective two to achieve objective two. This is the findings. Uh, the lowest mean score was uh, in terms of certain planning periods in terms of uh, determination of land location. So uh, basically, uh, this is the finding. I just mentioned uh, generals uh, on the need to 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 save time. Okay, so um, this is um. All the findings uh, from structured interview based on development strategy in terms of land location. So basically, um, mismatch uh, and then um, uh, apa, uh, still uh, late considerations on the market demands and also miscalculations in the projections. Okay, so to research objective two is more on the land size. So basically, uh, lowest mean score is uh, in terms of high rise types. Uh, and this is all the structured interview, okay. Okay, this one in terms of guideline, okay, under still under research objective two. So the finding was uh, lowest mean score is um, related to provisions of community facilities, okay, due to quantity required is quite big, okay, due to, okay. This one to achieve research objective three, which related to a uh, process of uh, um, planning control. So uh, findings from questionnaire survey is related to uh, compliance with low densities. And also um, this is the findings among the findings from such an interview. All right. Uh, this is in terms of uh, factors of difficulty. So basically, the lowest mean score was in terms of waiting time. Okay, waiting time for preparation of the concept. Basically, waiting time. Okay. So uh, I've been asked uh, the respondents on the uh, their perceptions on the uh, national housing policy uh, under third trust this is the first uh, versions of national housing policy so basically um, the lowest mean score was on the aspect of relating to a uh, bit that set concept okay okay this is the summary finding on the questionnaire survey as you can see here the um, basically uh, uh, um, uh, you can see uh, all is in terms uh, all is uh, actually moderate and eh? moderate levels okay in terms of policy uh, lo land location housing land size uh, planning guideline compliance but um, uh, rated uh, in terms of difficulty is uh, actually still difficult eh? in terms of uh, the planning uh, application approvals okay so this is to achieve research objective four, basically uh, using this uh, IPA index. So um, uh, this is a introduction. So uh, those aspect, planning aspect that uh, fall under quadrant one is actually um, good in terms of its performance and also in terms of importance. So. Uh, uh, the red one, uh, those aspects that uh, under quadrant two uh, will be categorized under high priority. So we need to uh, do some uh, improvement lah untuk this planning aspect. Okay. Hmm. Alright, so uh, for policy, policy aspect, 
basically there are four items under quadrant one uh, so we need to maintain the the importance as well as in terms of the effectiveness so uh, six items is fall under quadrant two which is a uh, weakness Okay, in terms of policy related to quality and standard, price, housing need, policy coordination, low cost and also ownership. So basically, uh, this uh, six item is less attention and also need improvement. So for land location, uh, there are 13 items uh, fall under quadrant one, which is strength. So basically, one item is fall under quadrant two, which is, uh, this is the weaknesses. Okay, so needs uh, some improvement in terms of um, um, considerations of housing market demands, uh, especially in low land location. Okay, one item is under quadrant three, not effective and not important. So it's considered low priority for improvements. Okay. So for aspect three, land size, uh, basically all items uh, in land size and planning guideline are highly important and highly effective due to the fact that it's uh, fall under quadrant one. So uh, it should be maintained and exported. Okay, in terms of compliance, uh, 14 items is fall under quadrant one and three items fall under quadrant two, which is uh, it is uh, very important but rated low in terms of density, compliant with density and also uh, the phases, development phases. So in terms of difficulty, uh, this is actually uh, all items uh, quadrant uh, fall under quadrant two, which is all items is actually important in uh, planning requirements, but rated low in term F, uh, in terms of uh, very difficult. Okay. So for NHP Trust, uh, basically one item fall under quadrant two, which is DTS seems uh, very important to solve this uh, issue on housing planning, but rated low in terms of it is uh, very difficult to implement actually in real, real uh, uh, one. Okay, so high priority for improvement, especially for uh, build then set concept. So basically, um, there are 25 planning aspects need to improve uh, based on ranking, uh, difficulty, and then uh, policy, compliance, land location, NHP trust, and also land size, and planning guideline need to be maintained in terms of this uh, depends on the quadrant. So this is the recommendation. So the key findings from the research is actually the preparations of structure plan and local plan in Selangor State is actually somehow effective uh, due to uh, moderate, okay, moderate findings and uh, inefficient process of planning and control during application and approval is actually uh, in terms of a uh, factor of difficulty to uh, to to follow the planning requirement, okay. So uh, this is all the recommendation that falls uh, under different role by uh, federal, uh, Selangor State and also uh, local authority under Selangor City and Municipal Council. Okay, basically this is the framework uh, as a research output. Okay, so framework to improve housing planning activities and process basically involved in uh, policy land location, land size, um, guidelines, compliance and also difficulty. This is all based on recommendation highlighted in, uh, in expert interview. Okay. So this is research contribution. Uh, the significant output is to, uh, based on the framework that I uh, mentioned um, uh, previously, and also IPA index in terms of searching for the planning aspect that need uh, high attention for improvement. So basically the research contribution is uh, broadening research in the area of housing planning and also a uh, change of conceptual idea on the approach itself. Uh, it is also uh, contribute in terms of uh, practical practical uh, process and also the adaption, adoptions of uh, methodology. Okay, this is area for future research. Uh, basically, uh, this is um, um, 
uh, quite a lot jugalah untuk area for future research basically uh, uh, next uh, next uh, research on related topic would be uh, cover new scopes basically more on probably on uh, household demands and market demand uh, in terms of type and choice Uh, the second one is involve uh, perceptions of other stakeholders rather than uh, planners. Okay, probably uh, developers, properties, analysts and so on. So uh, identifying and ranking the significant factors uh, which explain uh, between the issues. And also um, rather than uh, concentrating on uh, apa, uh, two planning mechanism, maybe an uh, um, area for future research uh, can concentrate on one planning mechanism, be it um, in terms of preparations of structure plan or maybe in terms of local plan or maybe in terms of um, housing application. So selections of other case study area or two or more rather than only Selangor and adoptions of other methods, uh, especially in terms of planning document analysis. Uh, probably uh, the, res the future research can focus more on the housing application filed uh, during Kebenaran Merancang. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, um, thank you Dr. Habiza. Um, next, um, Dr. Alamah Masni, a senior lecturer from the Center of Studies for Landscape Architecture, FSPU UITM Puncak Alam. The presentation is entitled The Effect of the Surrounding Limitation, Building Construction and Human Factors. Um, and human practice on the thermal performance of housing in a tropical environment. Uh, before she starts, a brief, a brief uh, background of uh, Dr. Arama. She first obtained her Bachelor of Housing, Building and Planning and Majoring in Architecture in 1998 from the University of Science and She completed the Masters of Landscape Architecture in 2000 from University of Science and Nature. And subsequently, her PhD in Architecture in 2012 from Victoria University of Wellington, Adelaide, uh, New Zealand. So her PhD research focuses on cooling energy saving for hot and humid tropical climate, environment of nature. And without further ado, uh, we'd like to welcome Dr. Alamah to share her today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, welcome to our Mr. Moderator. Can you see my yes my PowerPoint? Yes. So okay. So I I cannot see my PowerPoint. So in what happened? <laughs> we only see partially. Sorry, Mr. Madre Mr. Madre. Uh, we only see partially. So I think you need to click on uh, presentation mode. Presentation, Welcome. presentation mode. Ah. Okay. Click, or I click already. The bottom icon. Bottom, bottom icon. Ah. Okay, this one. Yes. Okay, can you see audience? Okay. When you click next, you see, because it's only half of the page. Um, I don't know if it's me, but uh, I only see half. Half? Half? Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Keluar balik semula kot. Keluar balik semula. Okay. Kita masuk balik. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, I hope audience can see my title. Nah, masih lagi. Masih lagi. Eh? What happened? Eh? Apa? You pakai dua screen ke, Dr. Lama? Eh, you pakai dua screen atau satu screen je? Satu je tak ada. Satu je. Tadi, tadi cuba okey je. <laughs> Tapi tak perlu, we have time. Okay. Turn off caption. Turn off ready. Okay. Same? Masih sama ke? Uh, yes. I think uh, Dr. Alamah pas oh, ke saya uh, send it to me and then after I think. Okay. Okay. I send it. Uh, this is the okay, so uh, can um, is the presentation too? Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Alam Hamisni. Uh, I study my PhD in Wellington School of Architecture, Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand. And uh, my topic is the effect of surrounding vegetation, building construction and human factors on the thermal performance of housing in tropical environment. So, uh, so there are three, param three main parameters here about surrounding vegetation, building constructions, and I have focused to building envelopes, and human factors is actually referred to the human behavior to use air conditioning system in their interior space, interior space of their house, and about thermal performance of housing. Uh, housing here, I, I choose a uh, single family house or bungalow house, and located in tropical climates of Malaysia. And my primary supervisor is Emeritus Professor George Bitt and my co-supervisor is Professor Penny Allen, both of them from uh, Wellington of School Architecture. Okay, overview. Okay, energy costs and environmental concern uh, currently have become very important as human consumption of energy continues to increase and while, while our independ independence on energy is not likely to decrease, it is important to improve the energy efficiency in our environment. There are many ways to improve the energy efficiency in our environments. Uh, Envelope technologies such as a wall, floors and roof insulation have a priority role in producing a comfortable interior space of the house. However, building in hot tropical climates still 
frequently depend on energy using of air conditioning system to control their uh, interior space or interior environment. So the energy use is dependent on the number of variables such as climate, the surrounding vegetation, the orientation of building or house, the structure of the building and material use, and the cons in the uh, construction and building envelope. So this study, I focus on the uh, building constructions, it actually refer to the building envelope and their materials, uh, and their material use uh, includes their albedo value, their air value, and the areas and material use. Okay. In essence, uh, climate factors has have a significant effect on the balance of energy usage in buildings. By controlling the microclimates, it is possible to control energy usage for cooling or for heating in, in buildings. So architects uh, can create a microclimate boundary by manipulating the building envelopes and exterior environment. And if the microclimate condition around the building is very similar to the desired interior condition, so little extra energy is required. Conversely, if uh, the microclimate is significantly different from the desired interior condition, large amount of energy may be required for heating or maybe for cooling. Okay, next. Uh, the awareness and knowledge of the potential of vegetation to modify microclimate could produce any method to quantify the energy saving potential of landscaping around the building or house. The okay, next is uh, uh, a little bit of uh, background of my studies. So vegetation has a potential to reduce energy consum consumption in individual buildings and increasingly the energy efficiency of the community as a whole. So vegetation uh, can influence solar radiation, air temperature, humidity, and also airflow. So the three main functions of vegetation used to modify microclimate are three shades, evapotranspiration process, and also wind control. Uh, wait, Mr. Moderator, I haven't finished yet. Okay, so um, uh, strategically placed sh shade trees around the building can potentially modify microclimate and building energy use through shading. Yeah. Uh, the shedding can reduce the amount of radiant heat absorbed and stored by building and other uh, boot surfaces. And evapotranspiration is a process of transferring moisture from the earth to the atmosphere by evaporation of water and transpiration from plant, thereby cooling the air. And vegetation can be used to control wind as a barrier or windbreak. Vegetation also can channel in the directing of the flow of air and provide more effective ventilation and a convective cooling of building. So this is my major contribution of my th uh, from my thesis. The first one is uh, on environment. So Mr. Moderator, please click. No, contribution. The slide, previous slide. Okay. On... Uh, energy conservation first. So, so this is my major contribution on energy conservation. So the average of household use up to 37% of their electricity consumption on, of, on cooling. That means every single house, they spend almost 40% of their electricity consumption every month uh, special for cooling, to, for cooling their interior space okay careful planning of exterior spaces can help reduce energy consumption for cooling by reducing the adverse impact of some climate factors so this study found that strategic landscaping could reduce electricity use and cost by as much as 20 percent a year okay. next Okay, uh, next, my contribution is on environment. So the strategic design on landscaping could reduce heat built up in a house by as much as four degrees Celsius for the exterior space and three degrees Celsius for the exterior spaces. So the strategic landscaping can exist in creating a favorable microclimate in the house 
and next is a click next and reduce the energy as consumption as a whole okay next okay this presentation consists of two key issues about environmental issue energy conservation issues research questions in an objective research methodology uh next uh, click next okay uh no previous previous okay my research methodology are divided into two phase case study one and case study two and if you if we still have time i want to share with you about my result and the discussion in one chapter and next is conclusion and the last one is my reflections the next so we go to the uh, key issue the first one is about the environmental issue okay. So um, uh, in the urban level, the urban heat island effect is a phenomenon where air temperature in built up areas are higher than the temperature of the surrounding rural country. So the absorbed heat in this area is subsequently re radiated to the surrounding and increased ambient temperature, especially at night time. So, uh, causing the surface temperature of urban structure to become 5 to 10 degrees Celsius higher than surrounding areas uh, than this heat island influence most of the uh, major cities around the world. In tropical climate, heat island contributes significantly to the urban dwellers' summer discomfort and energy bill due to the increase of cooling load. Yeah. Next. Yeah, this is the uh, refer to EPA GOV sketch of a bird heat island profile is focused in the downtown area and um, uh, the, in the downtown area the heat urban island is happening and the, uh, the, the temperature is higher than the rural area here next so uh, my key issue uh, number two is energy conservation issue so, improved living standard and increased population are parameters that may contribute to the dramatic increase of the building energy consumption worldwide. So, an increase of, an increase of urban population by 1% may increase energy consumption by 2.2%. This is referred to Santa Maurice 2001. And the annual energy consumption is predicted to increase to 30 to 40%. Yeah, a year. And in tropical country, uh, the increase in building energy consumption is mainly for air conditioning use. Okay. The air conditioning is only meant to achieve thermal comfort during the hot season, but unfortunately, it consumes a high amount of energy and use ambient air as a heat sink. Next. Okay. Next. Okay. Click all. Okay, this is my research questions. I have two research questions here. How much can temperature be decreased by strategic design landscaping around tropical domestic building? And how much energy can be saved through strategic design landscaping around the tropical domestic building in their in immediate neighborhood area? Next. And this is the aim of my study, to examine the quality, quali quantify to examine and quantify the relationship between surrounding, surrounding vegetation and the thermal performance of housing in the hot tropical environment. Next. So with uh, objective to determine for the average tropical residents, the reduction in temperature and en energy saving potential uh, use uh, by vegetation by number one, examine planting pattern and structures, and number two is quantify and validate the result. Next. next. So next we go to the research methodology. Okay. Okay. And no, previous slide. Moderator is too fast. Okay. The map well met. Well met. Well met. Okay. So uh, the area of my study is in tropical city of Malaysia. 
Palumpo uh, uh, Lumpur is located in equatorial climate region and at three degree uh, north latitude and one zero one degree east longitude, uh, the climate here is classified as hot and humid tropical climate. Okay. And uh, the other countries uh, in along the coastal line here, uh, in dark green color, have a similar type of climate uh, with Malaysia. So in general, Malaysia has two distinct seasons. The raining season is from mid-November until March. And uh, the dry season occurs from mid and September. Malaysia has abundance of solar radiation with average of six hours sunshine per day. And the average of temperature is about 22 to 30, 37 degrees Celsius. And relative humidity is around 58 to 97%. So rainfall is very heavy throughout the year with an annual average about 2,000 mm to 3,500 mm. Okay, next. Next. Okay, this is the area of my study because I present uh, in, in Wellington. That's why I show the specific area of my study. So I choose how single family house located in Putrajaya and Selangor. Uh, 70% is located in Sha'alam and the rest 30% is located in Putrajaya. Okay, next. So this is the um, uh, example plan of medium size of single houses, single family house. And the bulk area here is around 330 square meters. Med medium, medium size of single family house in the context of tropical city of Malaysia uh, was chosen in this study. Uh, this is example of, uh, of uh, medium size and the main structure is built by concrete. In Malaysia, single family house with the surrounding garden are presently the most common type of house typology for the upper middle and upper classes. Okay, and uh, this group of people represent around 40% of the season of Malaysia. Okay, next. So this is an example of double story of single family house during 1970s located in uh, Shah Alam. Next. So another era of architecture this is the uh, double story house, single family house, also located in Shah Alam, which is around 1980s. Next. Uh, another example is double story of single family house, uh, which is around 1990s, located in Putrajaya. Next. And then another example of double story of single family house, built around uh, 2000, around year 2000, is also located in Putrajaya. Okay, next. So next is field measurement. So I divided my field measurement into two stages. So the first one, the stage number one, my field measurement. Uh, uh, in stage one, the target respondent or house uh, about uh, 50 houses. So um, the research was undertaken in two different stage of housing development. The first development of housing is less than five years each. And the second, the housing development with surrounding vegetation age from 20 to 30 years. So the reason for choosing the, the different age of housing estate is because of the different age of the maturity of vegetation around the house. And this influences the energy use and thermal comfort and performance of the home residence. Okay. And the fieldwork measurement structure is divided into four sections. There are where the data building construction, landscaping, and human factors. Okay, next. So this is an example of method uh, to measure and draw for each house, the configuration and location of three around the house. So uh, north point is uh, towards here, and I use X and Y axis here to, to measure anything uh, material that located around the house. This is referred to Simpson 2002. Next, uh, this is an example of uh, different um, different setting of uh, housing estate. Uh, this is an example located in South Island in New Zealand. Okay, uh, look at, at this. It's actually the the uh, the housing 
setting of the uh, housing estate is similar and uh, so I guess the construction of the each housing also similar but the difference here is the the age of the uh, the maturity of the landscape that look at around this uh, settlement for example the first one is I guess this is more than 20 years and the garden number two is maybe uh, around five to ten years and then the last the last one is not less than five uh, not more than five years of uh, housing development next so this is another example so in this uh, uh, if I've not, uh, mistaken this is located in uh, section six uh, Shah Alam development the development of housing with soaring vegetation age around 20 to 30 years uh, look at, at the surrounding here is look uh, the the surrounding vegetation is look mature next so another example, this is neighborhood uh, area uh, located in Prisim 8 Putrajaya. This is less than five years each of construction in housing development. So the development of housing with surrounding vegetation uh, also similar like building constructions each five years. Next. next. Okay, next is stage two. The target respondents are about 10 houses. Yeah. And a uh, house from set st uh, stage one is used with the with or without a conditioning system. This uh, depend to the size, building construction, household, and also the data of different in landscape design. So the three design for comparison in different amount, age, and placement of vegetation. Next. Uh, and design landscape, whether they practice in a strategic lo location or not. Next. Okay, continue. The choice of mount and placement of vegetation structure are based on their uh, shade uh, by trees, shading, evapotranspiration, and wind challenging characteristic. And also uh, you, the using of different color of building envelopes also include in this fieldwork. Okay. Next, also uh, uh, this uh, my PhD is totally used experiment by quantitative measurement, and this uh, document saving in the energy in the energy use will be documented. Yeah, uh, this is another example of house with very minimum of landscaping. Okay, next. Uh, house, uh, mature tree around house, but less shrubs around there, uh, building envelopes. Okay, next. So this is the effective planting around the house. This house is actually located in Mountain View, California, USA. Okay, um, this, uh, this is an, uh, an example of effecting, uh, effective planting around the house to provide shade evapotranspiration and channeling wind throughout the surrounding and also to provide cross ventilation cross ventilation into buildings tall tongue trees can channel wind and provide effective ventilation into the building surrounding so the spreading canopies provide uh, shades throughout the uh, the gardens and in this example it's cover almost look at, at this picture it covers almost 80% of building envelope surfaces, include a roof, wall, and windows during hot summer day. So shrub planted close to the house will shade walls and windows during in the early morning and late afternoon. So uh, time here is around uh, before 11 and after 3 o'clock. Uh, 11 a.m. until 3 o'clock clock in the afternoon is peak time of the day okay grass and turf can generate evapotranspiration and cool the surrounding air in the gardens and the combination of every type of vegetation and strategically placed with a right amount size species and form of trees can potentially modify the surrounding microclimate and reduce building energy use Next. So this is example of my of my uh, actual study located in uh, Putrajaya. This is a landscape plan for strategic design landscaping. 
around the house and will maximize wind flow towards uh, surrounding vegetation. So even uh, the the tree planting around uh, this house is look dense. However, they still have the wind flow to go through to this uh, surround uh, garden and also to do a cross ventilation uh, via uh, opening around the around this house, around the around the uh, for each wall. Especially here, uh, the the wind flow uh, have cross ventilation from east to west side. Next. So this is the section elevation of the house, a similar house. Uh, with landscaping to encourage wind flow to get through to the house and surrounding garden. And also, uh, uh, this uh, also to provide shade. Yeah? The whole combination of uh, vegetation around this house also uh, provide shade, especially in the morning and afternoon to the building envelopes. Next. Okay. Conclusion. Uh, in this study, the direct and indirect uh, uh, thermal impact of vegetation around single family house and their neighborhood under tropical climate condition were investigated through field measurement and use quantitative methods. Okay. And data on the effect of vegetation on the thermal performance of building and their microclimates and the methods for predicting the effect of uh, tree sheets, evapotranspiration, and channeling wind to reduce the temperature and energy use will be used to analyze all results. Okay, Origin 8 software was used to analyze data and to produce a quantitative result with the quant quantitative evidence to of energy saving and thermal performance of the house, the design guidelines were developed to assist the construction team and industries and the owner of the house and their communities to increase the energy efficiency and thermal performance of housing in tropical environment. Okay, next. Okay, the last part is about reflection. This is based from my experience. So um, during my study journey in a three year study in New Zealand, so I feel this is, is like a practical training. It's a intellectual professional, to be a professional researcher, work with my supervisor and in three years and I uh, do and apply, uh, I practice applied research and and also in three years, I is, is seeking areas of concentration, concentration of my research. And um, this three years experience uh, uh, is bring confidence to handle and, ma and, and manage my, maybe my future research and also my publications. And uh, as a university staff of University of University of UITM, uh, me as a researcher to be an yeah independent researcher to produce an original research new things as for an academic purpose and as a contribution to the country my beloved country Malaysia and uh, the others are just like my ambition after I finish my study okay. next next okay next Okay, um, if you have any question, you can email using this address. And then uh, that's, that's all of my presentation. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Alama and Dr. Hamza. Um, since we still have some time left, um, I'd like to open for any Questions from the floor? Any questions, anybody? Uh, 
I guess I think uh, the presentation was uh, astounding uh, and uh, fulfilling to the audience um, who joined in today. So I think um, maybe I'll ask the question to the uh, Prof. Wan, do you want to ask any question? Uh, just a quick question, you know. Boleh dengar ke? Boleh, boleh. Mic. Ah, boleh. Uh, question to Dr. Alama. Uh, I just want to ask you about the uh, software, you got the tadi software, apa benda, number 8, apa benda. Uh, so, uh, I haven't seen your results in the lab list, but you have not shown anything, uh, the wind flow and so on. And will you show us some some of your results? Eh? So, mungkin uh, the wind flow, macam mana, how you do the simulation and so on. It is just a quick question. Yeah. Right, thank you, bro. Mr. Moderator, can you open my presentation, please? Okay. Okay. Uh, Prof. Wan, actually, I use Origin 8 for my chapter, last chapter, for my last chapter of my results. So here, I have uh, some example of uh, chapter, if I'm not mistaken, chapter 5. So here, I use Excel. Okay. Uh, origin origin oh, eight is actually uh, a software it's like excel but it's more complicated usually scientists use uh, this software so i use this software because of my university in new zealand they provide this uh, software and easy for me to use and i think it's suitable for my research okay. go down mr moderator go down yeah, okay. Yeah, can you show me some of the examples? Yeah, I just want yeah. to see example, some go down, 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 lagi, 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 until the end, and continue a new page, next, lagi, lagi, oh, lagi. ah, lagi, oh, this is example, oh, okay, stop, stop, okay, ah, uh, this is an example of my results in chapter four, it's about, uh, previous, 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 Previous. Okay, it's about the effect of landscaping on the thermal performance of housing. So this is uh, actually is results in stage two methodology. Next, 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 next. Similarity. So I use vegetation uh, theory can influence the uh, thermal performance of houses, and this is the uh, average maximum and minimum temperature. Uh, relative humidity and wind, wind in 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 our country Malaysia in especially in Kuala Lumpur. Next, uh, next. Okay, we we go quick. Uh, this is method that I use. Okay, next. And also a research equipment is quite complicated to to explain here. So I use this is for outdoor and for indoor indoor space the all of this uh, research equipment i i borrow from fsbu and the rest i bring from new zealand next so most of the equipment i just transfer the data to to excel and then after that i i analyze so this is the first house that i choose to to do my experiment to to do a qualitative method here it's located in section six Shah alam next so this is I draw I redraw this area to explain the the buildings and the surrounding garden and the hardscape and water element located around the garden and it can influence the overall uh, thermal performance of this area and the age of this house I I name it is Mitchell landscape house and the age is around twenty to thirty years the owner of the house is. A specialist doctor work in Kuala Lumpur and look at, at the house here look old and the, look at, at the um, the color of the building envelopes for roof here and the surrounding vegetation and uh, the edge is uh, look old and the size of vegetation also reach the standard of 
of uh, uh, usual landscaping, usual garden. Uh, this is the uh, elevations and uh, porch and other uh, area of of the house. I mean, uh, the garden, surround the garden. And then look at other species here. Okay, next. Next. Okay. Um, the second house I name it is ordinary landscape house here. It's located in section 11 Sha'alam, and the age of this house is around 10 years old. 10 years old, and the owner of the house is a um, lawyer and businessman. And look at, at the surrounding of the house. They plant shade trees, and they also have a uh, water element like a swimming pool and another uh, water fountain. And uh, they plant so many shrubs and uh, less uh, shade trees and the location of shade trees is actually not in a strategic location. Okay, next. Okay, uh, one more is house. I name it is new landscape house because of this house is the age of this house is around uh, five uh, years old and owned by government servant. Uh, Jusa C is equal to VK7 located in section nine. So uh, in this house, they uh, plant uh, the size of trees around this house is still small size and uh, they also uh, the owner of the house also have fish full in the fish pool in this area that means water element they provide water element and then the boundary of the house they plant along here with uh, uh, shrubs so, so this is the uh, the view of the house and look at, at the garden here the size of uh, a shrub along the boundary of the house, along the boundary of the walls or building envelopes of the house, uh, the the age is still small and uh, because of the age is uh, not more than five years old. Okay, next. Next. So this is the, the no, previous, previous slides. So this is the data for special for building envelopes in these three uh, houses I compare with the mature ordinary and new is, is actually uh, reflect their uh, uh, surrounding garden surrounding uh, landscaping so look at, at the building envelope here start with building footprint floor roof wall color and then I also um, uh, measure their albedo for walls and roof here and also the garden size so all uh, these three houses are in uh in category of uh medium size of single family house and look at up the here the wall albedo and roof albedo is not much different okay and the garden size also uh new have a smaller and the biggest one is a garden owned by mature tree and look at at the here and the next one about building envelope is their walls and uh glass surfaces or opening so most of the opening of, of these three houses they use a glass so why why glass well, because of is 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 our culture is our style uh, during this era and um glass here is quite uh, critical because of they can uh, bring uh, through the direct solar radiation so look at uh, the ordinary mature ordinary and new landscape here of uh, their walls uh, so I calculate all here the amount of walls and and also glass in in square meter. So I also study about the location in bed, either the located at north, east, south, or west area. And look at at the total here. So uh, the total is uh, is not much different compared to others. Okay, next. Next, uh, this is three growth in the in the in this in mature landscape house. So this is example one of the house there, uh, uh, mature landscape house. So I collect all, and I record all of the pieces here. I I write here, and then I I explain it in their trunk height, overall height, canopy size. So because of the canopy size, uh, can influence the the shape that they can provide along. Uh, uh, under the tree or maybe uh, touch the uh, building envelopes and shapes of the of the trees and amount of leaves and size of leaves together and i uh, put this all uh, species in uh, i provide code because it's 
it's very hard to put everything in different in different numbers so i practice i i, I put in code uh, okay uh uh don't boleh uh, ini, this is not a viva actually eh dr lama <laughs> sorry eh okay. <laughs> this is not a uh, I, i just want to ask you if you were to summarize if you were to summarize your, your okay game, go what down no significant uh, uh contribution eh okay go down mr moderator uh, go down okay. until and just until one end. End. yeah yeah so i understand go down until end mr moderator so just quick uh so quick and okay this is the result and discussion for this chapter next so this is the finding next next at the pressure between three houses and then this is the empty pressure uh at the pressure relative humidity absolute humidity next wind speed and i do validation with uh data from the airport and wind speed next next okay, shedding this is actually is my finding prof one okay yeah, i summarize my finding previous most summarized previous slide okay this is my finding actually the shedding is uh for roof cover walls and windows and shading of soil around the building so these three combination of the category located around the house is actually influence the thermal performance of the house okay next so and then also wind channeling next and evapotranspiration process so actually evapotranspiration for transpiration process can influence directly their moisture content around the atmosphere the ambient atmosphere located around the house okay next okay uh, when we combine uh, uh, for evapotranspiration wind channel wind and also temperature when we combine all together uh, with uh, proper channeling of wind we can provide a uh, cool and comfort environment as well as we can reduce the temperature and also can reduce the uh, energy consumptions uh, uh, located in at interior of the house by using less air conditioning system that's all thank you okay, okay. but um uh yang the, the, the last one the low vegetative planting at non strategic locations around building was one of the main factors in this new plan um are you saying that uh shops increase uh temperatures in the time or uh, um this one is referred to low vegetative plant planting and located in non strategic location strategic location here is actually refer to the the strategic location of of plants of vegetation we plan around the the building around the structure of or around the house so the strategic location is actually refer to the sunset and sunrise so during sunset so the the direct solar radiation will uh, uh, affect will reach our building envelopes so when we put in uh, all vegetation in the strategic location for example we plan all our vegetation in east and west uh, indirectly can uh, can produce a it's like a shade a shade for for walls and also for a roof especially in during uh, early morning and also during peak time of the day at 11 to 3 o'clock uh, every day so this is uh, the meaning of strategic location so i guess um, the best uh, type of uh, vegetation is those who give shade to the building as much as possible without um, also interfering with the air uh, um, yeah uh, in my finding the significant element of uh, surrounding vegetation can give significant impact to the surrounding air or ambient air is uh, shade trees Uh, shade trees because of the size of shade trees is quite big compared to other type of vegetation and at the same time can provide 
uh, shit for the uh, is quite huge area around uh, in the garden and also maybe can provide shade for their walls and also roof and i mean uh, they can provide uh, uh, shade for building envelopes so in my finding the significant influence is by uh, um, shade trees for shade trees yeah? however uh, if we depending on shade trees only is we cannot achieve a maximum effect from vegetation that's why we have to combine with other type of vegetation like uh, shade trees combined with uh, shrubs, ground cover, and also turf. These small trees like turf and ground cover work uh, well to cover the earth surface and then to provide um, uh, evapotent separation process, especially during peak time of the day, and they can produce uh, uh, moisture content or humidity around the around the garden and around the outdoor of the of the house. Okay. With the combination of the, these three types of vegetation, they can provide maximum effect of cooling around the, around the, I mean the external uh, area of the of the house, and then uh, directly can influence the um, the conditions or the environments or the thermal performance that located in the interior of the house. Okay, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anybody has any questions? Uh, we have a few more minutes left. Any questions for Dr. Hamiza? Maybe a short question to Dr. Hamiza. Um, was uh, data collection uh, quite difficult on your part when you start to deal with all the um, um stakeholders okay thank you very much uh, uh mr moderator uh, it's a, a very good question actually because um uh, as um, i mentioned previously uh, this uh, research is more focused on the um, actually more focused on the uh, inside uh, seeking on the inside um uh, upper emphasis on the uh, process of the housing planning so um this is very um, crucial part actually to get the the uh, data from um, uh, stakeholders especially those uh, uh, involved in um, uh, preparations of the structure plan or location plan and also uh, those involved in the uh, submissions of uh, what we call um, submissions of the uh, housing application and also housing approval so um I have to set uh, a single cross-sectional uh, method, uh, which is uh, only those uh, uh, that have time uh, within the time frames were collected as a um, uh, sample size. So, um, so yeah, um, it's when you ask, is it a very challenging? Yes, uh, it's. Uh, I take almost. Um, um, one year and more lah, <laughs> and also for the finding, uh, for the analysis of the knee, um, uh, and write up the like gigan, and then um, there are also um momentum, macam nak cakap eh, um, um, sometimes momentum tu masa buat uh, uh PhD tu dia macam ada kadang turun, ada kadang naik, and then along the journey tu um masa at the first start of the PhD tu sebenarnya saya belum lagi berkahwin apa semua so uh, along the journey tu banyaklah uh, and then um, that's um, the different story uh, different person have different story actually but um, uh, the most important thing is uh, you need to complete uh, the task that you have been given uh, at the first place so never ending, um, never never stop, uh, complete the the journey lah. Okay. Um, so kalau yang dapat graduate on time, tu extra bonus. It's a uh, rezeki. So actually, uh, challenge challenge tu semua tu sebenarnya pun rezeki daripada uh, Allah juga lah. Sebenarnya is uh, bukan achievement uh, untuk kita mendapatkan that certificate, but also um, achievements of life juga. Uh, itu je lah. Thank you. Did you did you manage to present your findings to the PBT or? Uh, oh no, 
Not yet. That's, that's the the but uh, I did present um this finding um uh, by conferences uh that's that's the the only way because um uh, I completed this PhD study uh in five years so uh scholarship tu dah cut down kat situ so uh the other restriction in terms of ni lah but uh alhamdulillah uh I still uh. Uh, manage to compete alhamdulillah okay um thank you dr hamiza i think um our time is almost um towards the end um boleh saya tanya boleh boleh ah tak bagi bagi orang lain dululah ah cik bu assalamualaikum semua mm -hmm. uh, i ada satu question uh, but first of all thank you and congrats to dr lama and dr hamiza and uh, uh, the findings from the Dr. Alama uh, research is very interesting. And uh, in, our, in our landscape architecture field, we actually um, do a lot of a lot of uh, that thing that relates to Dr. Alama findings. But this question is perhaps uh, to Dr. Alama or even uh, Dr. Prof. Wan or Prof. Das. Uh, I, I see Prof. Das as well in here uh, because, because uh, you both are in the top management. Uh, the findings or the issues or the output or the result from Dr. Alama doesn't reflect in our environment, especially in the faculty, if you, if you look at in the micro level. So um, how are we going to... Uh, uh, relates or materialize or uh, use the findings from the Dalama in, in our faculty. Thank you. Well, who should answer this question? Prof. Wain or me? Oh. Uh, uh, oh. Either Prof. Wain or uh. maybe Prof. Das as well. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Saya jawab sikit lah. Saya jawab sikit. So kita ya yeah, kita currently uh, we are doing a research on the uh, effect of high rise building. Ya yeah, kita tengok the effect not only the high rise building the orientation uh, the material and so on through simulation punya program lah. Uh, itu boleh dibuat. It's quite simple kalau nak buat faculty punya kita boleh buat very simple uh, simulation with the building yang ada building yang ada ada tengah-tengahnya apa pun dia panggil tu. Ah uh, boleh. Uh, sebab kita tengah buat sekarang ni high rise building high rise building project dan kita nak tengok macam mana dia effect of temperature hmm. uh, dia effect kepada temperature dan dia effect kepada wind speed and so on uh, so so kita integrate semua itu dalam uh, simulation model uh, itu yang uh -huh. kita buat saya just just nak advertise sikitlah sorry lah dah tak lama pun banyak kerja dengan saya uh -huh. uh, it, because it is heartbreaking to, it is a, a heartbreaking to see uh, especially faculty uh, FSP in Shah Alam. Uh, uh, we chopped down the tree but we didn't plant it. So it's like um, it's against the uh, well we can say uh, climate change. So so uh, it's, it's heartbreaking to me as in, in this field or you know, something like that. Okay. Perhaps Dr. Alamo want to add more on that? Uh, probably we, we together lah. Sekarang ni kita buat, kita kerja pun asing-asing kan. So okay. if we can work together, kita boleh buat. Eh, sebab kita on the, kalau SUG ni mungkin ada expertise on the simulation, simulation modeling and so on. Hmm. But the input can, must come from the other field. So okay. mungkin, mungkin somebody can join with us and then tengok okay. dan sebagainya and, and then run the simulation model uh, dekat lab kita. Eh, so kita, kita boleh buat tu semua. Okay, uh, can I add uh, like uh, such as like personal opinion for that matter? Uh, my study is actually is to test the the effectiveness of the surrounding vegetation to the building envelopes and for the overall of the performance of the building. So I think is the best uh, the best area to test whether it's effective or not is our 
faculty because we are in uh, design <laughs> design this and we have source to do so uh, but uh, sad to say that uh, most of the original plan that located in our surrounding faculty and uh, right now is look like they do logging activities <laughs> it's, it's quite brutal to do and cut here and there and the appearance the original appearance of the faculty as it's like a life museum a green a green surrounding is right now change is is change is changed around more than 50 percent now this is my private eh, it's my personal uh, opinion so if you want to do um effective uh, uh, uh landscaping around our campus so make sure to follow the uh, right guideline to follow the strategic location of landscaping and must uh, plant uh, many shade trees if we have any shade trees here and then make sure uh, we maintain we maintain well uh, especially in their um, condition their health and everything to make sure that all um, shade trees are in good conditions and, and can give a maximum shades uh, uh, located strong in our faculty and we can maintain the cool and comfort environment especially located in outdoor environment as well as we can reduce the amount of uh, air conditioning that we use every day how to reduce the use of air conditioning system because we use uh, a standard isn't it so there are um it's like uh, just my opinion so when the surrounding of of the faculty is in good condition in the uh, cool and comfort environment so at the same time in the interior space of the building or office we can use um, high temperature that means maybe we can use 24 degrees celsius rather than we use 16 degree celsius in our usual day so we use 24 degrees celsius because of the surrounding uh, ambient air of our faculty is uh, we feel cool and comfort and this one is one way to reduce uh, energy consumption for cooling or for uh, using a conditioning system so this one that one is my uh, personal opinion thank you so uh, ma, uh, sorry tuan sekali lagi lah why not we work together and <laughs> sebab kita boleh kita will, on our part we can run the simulation so mungkin yeah. the, the initial part tu uh, mungkin kita tengok the existing existing macam mana dia effect to the uh, buildings and so on itu yang pertama yang kedua kita boleh run a few simulation eh, kita run simulation model untuk kita place the trees kat mana dan sebagainya pokok yeah. apa kita nak tanam uh, dia ada pokok yang sesuai dan sebagainya why not we run the simulation and see the effect dia macam mana and then kita come up with a proposal nanti come up with a proposal ini sepatutnya faculty saya tengok faculty saya pun sedih juga tengoklah saya walaupun dekan dulu kan tapi saya tengok dah semakin hari makin teruk dia rupa dia kan especially kat depan parking kereta tu pokok dah tumbang dan sebagainya eh? so, uh, so why not we work together check bone ke apa pun dia kan check uh, okay. bone lah sebagainya jadi boleh kita work together yes uh, I would love to I would love to Ah, uh, okay, okay. Nanti uh, kita cakap dia. Yeah. Ah, uh, Prof, look at at UPM for example, UPM University Putra Malaysia, Malaysia. Okay. How they set their uh, surrounding campus is look very lively and yeah, is is happening there. Yeah. yeah, kalau yeah, especially kalau kita pergi ke Indonesia, uh, we go to yeah. Indonesia. Saya pergi ke Taiwan and so on. Very nice campus dengan pokok-pokok besar and so on. Uh, uh, kalau and then uh, yeah. it's a real disaster lah. and then the most important thing we have to provide cool and comfort environment like we yeah. live in the garden in in, yeah. in the forest like in airport and in, in our klia airport the concept is airport in the forest that's why they yeah. provide so many green areas so i can imagine if our uh, fsu or our faculty to become a life museum a green museum like that is it's maybe it's beautiful <laughs> and uh beside beautiful is 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 happening yeah it's a uh, it's like a, an example yeah okay uh dr one ada um any other questions <laughs>
tak, tak ada question lah tapi kita sekarang ni tengah run on simulation of high rise building macam mana we yeah. uh, uh, high rise residential area we are working on that tapi we have the simulation model if kalau you nak work together kita hmm. faculty punya layout and so on kita kita run the model and, and see as I said, saya tengok especially kita pokok-pokok pang sorry to say eh pokok yeah. pang uh, maknanya dia dia cantik Cuma fungsinya tiada. Orang Indonesia datang macam tu lah. Dia tengok Syah Alam. Syah Alam banyak pokok pam. Dia kata cantik tapi fungsinya tiada. Dia kata. Yeah. So itulah dia eh, yang kita kena tengok. I think also um, large trees tu ada akar yang besar. A big roots so I think um, especially in residential people are not so keen on having big rooted trees lah. I think a newer, newer developments because of services and so on. Oh, that one is refer to street planting. My study is uh, uh, yeah, is focused in the surrounding garden. So there are many empty space here. We can create is like surrounding garden around FSP. Yeah. Uh, but but the thing is, uh, if we, if we want to plant the trees, but right, we not simply plant the trees, but we have to look at the uh, characteristic of the plants. You know, uh, the the shape. Uh, uh, akar and things like that tu sama ada dia sesuai uh, uh, dekat building ataupun daun building dan sebagainya in terms of the apa tu even even uh, to as as uh, detail as sama ada pokok tu uh, boleh attract burung uh, atau tidak sebab takut burung tu berak dan sebagainya and it's not suitable for the uh, parking area itu, hmm. uh, itu yang kita nak kena tengok the characteristic of the trees so function and the second one is baru ada uh, apa tu uh, uh, aesthetic dia. Okay. Boleh join Dr. Wan untuk buat the simulation tu. Okay um, I think um, it's about 11.40 already. Um, uh, thank you very much everybody for joining in our session. I think uh, Dr. Akmal has um, share the uh, Google form for your attendance. Um, thank you everybody um, again uh, for today. I hope that uh, we would also, uh, we would continue um, joining in with our PhD sharing session um, in the near future. Uh, thank you speakers for your um, elaborate and insightful um, sharing session um, on your uh, respective topics. Um, and with that, uh, thank you very much and hope you hope to see everyone again in the next session. Thank you.